Hello, welcome to this video mini lesson, Introduction to Normal Curve Equivalence, and also other transformations. When you were maybe in, say, the fifth grade, you learned how to transform a percent to a decimal and to a fraction, and to move from any one of these to the other. Those are transformations, in a sense. You're transforming say a decimal to a fraction and or to a percent. Well, we can use z-scores to do transformations of our own. For example, last week you learned how to transform a raw score into a z-score using the formula of z equals the score minus the mean over the standard deviation. Well, you can use that same formula to move from a z-score to a raw score using algebraic techniques. Also, you can transform a cumulative percent or a percentile to a z-score. Now we use, do this using the z-score table that we used last week. Last week, we had a z-score and we used it to find a percent of an area between that score and the mean or that score and the tail of the distribution. Well, you can use that uh, lookup table in reverse to actually find a z-score using a percentile or a cumulative percent. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here we have our z-score table. Let's say that I knew that there was um, an area, excuse me, a percentile of, let's say, 18.4% excuse me, or um, a, a percentile of 18.4. We find that right here on this z-score table. So in order to transform this to a z-score, I simply move to the left to see that it would be 0 0.9 and move to the top to see that there would be a zero in the hundredths place. So my z-score for a percentile or a cumulative percent of 18.4 would be a negative 0 0.90. So this would be, if I were to draw it out, A 0 0.90, negative 0 0.90, would be really close to about this point right here. And it would represent this area of the curve here. So in other words, we have now found our z-score by starting with a percentile. Now, in addition to this handy dandy thing, you can also find a sample score from a percentile or cumulative percentile. And we'll actually go how to, over how to do that in class. But essentially, just as you can do all of these transformations with a z-score, you can also transform a z-score to a normal curve equivalent. Now, why on earth would you want to do something like that? Well, if we look at our normal curve here, and we have our different deviations here with our mean of zero, and down here, we see our percentiles. The problem with percentiles is that they are not equal interval. Sort of the distance or the space from the first percentile to the fifth percentile is much more significant than, say, for example, the distance from the 40th to 50th percentile. 
So our normal curve equivalents have the advantage of being what's called an equal interval scale. The space between any two points on the normal curve equivalent scale is equal to the distance between any other two contiguous points on the scale. Please let me know if you have any questions.